minutes, President Clinton is to address the nation about his testimony before Ken Starr's grand jury today. On this historic evening, we're back for a second hour of Larry King Live. And with us, joining us now, is Jeff Greenfield, who is CNN's senior political analyst. Jeff, uh, we got about, I guess, two minutes. Well, I'll tell you one thing, because, you know, predicting a speech is like a fool's errand, but this I will predict. After the president's speech, his approval ratings will go up. And I say that because every time a president speaks to the nation, his approval ratings go up. I don't, I don't, there may be an exception, I don't know it. And what will happen, it's what happens in the days and weeks ahead that in my view is the, is the real measure of it. But anybody who, who reads the next day's papers and sees these instant poll calls and says, well, the president did well, should know that presidents always get the people behind them in the first hours after speaking. Do you expect him to be effective? I will, I'm, you know, if I could do predictions, I'd be at Aqueduct, I'd bet the eight horse parley, and I'd buy an island in the Caribbean. I don't do predictions. I think the people will think he's effective in the first day because he is an effective communicator and people always think their president's effective. You gonna be effective, James? Yeah. I think you're defined. Didi? Yeah, I think so. The, the, the Not jumping off the table, Didi. No, I, 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 think it, I think he will be effective, and I, I agree with Jeff. It will remain to be seen if he hits all the notes, if, that, if that's sustainable. I think he will. I hope he will. Look, there's some speeches uh, you want to give, and some speeches you've got to give. Right. There's some speeches you've got to give tonight. <laughs> By the way, after the speech, we'll have Mr. Carville's comments, Ms. Dee Dee Meyer's comments. We'll have the comments of Senator John Ashcroft of Missouri, uh, Bay Buchanan, a co-host of Equal Time, Reverend Jesse Jackson later. Uh, Bob Woodward will be staying with us, and so too, of course, will Jeff Greenfield, as we understand it. The speech is about uh, uh, two minutes away. High expectancy? Well, well I think one of the interesting of questions watching. here, oh, I, I, <laughs> indeed they will, is he's speaking to a number of audiences in all of this. And maybe the most important audience for him are the Carvels and the Myers, his supporters. And whether you look at this and say, wow, he's really met the issue head on and that you people go out and defend him and say, let's put this behind us. Let's look at Starr again and make him the issue, which James well, did magnificently. Yeah. Good point. I, I, wanna, I want the, on a high-low bet, I want the high on the number of times you will hear, let's put this behind us and let's move on. Those are going to be the mantras for the next 24 hours on the part of Clinton supporters. Uh, the question is whether the public ultimately says, yeah, or they say, you know, we're coming to a second thought about what he did. We're not going to know that tomorrow morning. I think we're not going to know that for, for days and weeks. We did not know it until Ken Starr gives his report. Is there any, any winner in this? No. Oh, no. Everybody's loser, right? Media yeah, loser? Absolutely. Yeah, the only thing I, I, I would say is, is that public opinion on this thing has been pretty fixed since January. And it, it hadn't been a lot of volatility out there. And then people had said right after it came out, we've got to wait and see, we've got to wait and see. I mean, every public and private poll I've seen has is, is all been pretty rock solid. And, and, you know, we're looking at now, and last poll I saw is 70-26, and the 26 really, there's only four, four points for him to grow here. I mean, I think he's getting pretty close to the top of his uh, of his natural I ceiling. But, it, but the public opinion has been, it may change, it did, but it's pretty fixed. A little strange being the one to point out some of the bad news in those polls, but I think the president's character has taken a hit, and I think he has an opportunity, if he's straightforward, to win back people's respect. Thank you. Uh, we are about uh, 15 seconds away from the address of his presidency. We've taken out of the White House and the President of the United States. Good evening. This afternoon in this room, from this chair, I testified before the Office of Independent Counsel and the Grand Jury. I answered their questions truthfully, including questions about my private life, questions no American citizen would ever want to answer. Still, I must take complete responsibility for all my actions, both public and private. And that is why I'm speaking to you tonight as you know, in a deposition in January, I was asked questions about my relationship with Monica Lewinsky. While my answers were legally accurate, I did not volunteer information. Indeed, I did have a relationship with Ms. Lewinsky that was not appropriate. In fact, it was wrong. It constituted a critical lapse in judgment and a personal failure on my part for which I am solely and completely responsible. But I told the grand jury today, and I say to you now, that at no time did I ask anyone to lie, to hide or destroy evidence, or to take any other unlawful action. 
I know that my public comments and my silence about this matter gave a false impression. I misled people, including even my wife. I deeply regret that. I can only tell you I was motivated by many factors. First, by a desire to protect myself from the embarrassment of my own conduct. I was also very concerned about protecting my family. The fact that these questions were being asked in a politically inspired lawsuit, which has since been dismissed, was a consideration too. In addition, I had real and serious concerns about an independent counsel investigation that began with private business dealings 20 years ago. Dealings, I might add, about which an independent federal agency found no evidence of any wrongdoing by me or my wife over two years ago. The independent counsel investigation moved on to my staff and friends, then into my private life. And now the investigation itself is under investigation. This has gone on too long, cost too much, and hurt too many innocent people. Now this matter is between me, the two people I love most, my wife and our daughter, and our God. I must put it right, and I am prepared to do whatever it takes to do so. Nothing is more important to me personally, but it is private. And I intend to reclaim my family life for my family. It's nobody's business but ours. Even presidents have private lives. It is time to stop the pursuit of personal destruction and the prying into private lives and get on with our national life. Our country has been distracted by this matter for too long. And I take my responsibility for my part in all of this. That is all I can do. Now it is time, in fact, it is past time to move on. We have important work to do, real opportunities to seize, real problems to solve, real security matters to face. And so tonight, I ask you to turn away from the spectacle of the past seven months, to repair the fabric of our national discourse, and to return our attention to all the challenges and all the promise of the next American century. Thank you for watching, and good night. James Carville. Well, uh, he, he certainly did accept responsibility. He said that one of the reasons he didn't do that was to avoid personal embarrassment for himself. I mean, that was the first thing out. And, uh, and uh, uh, I thought that I, I knew that he would do a fine job. I, he, he, he did a fine job. He, he had to come out and admit that what, what he did was wrong. He said that he misled people. He said he misled his wife. And I know for a fact that that, that is the mm -hmm. important thing to him. And I think he's going to be working on that real hard in the, in, in the weeks and months to come. Senator John Ashcroft, Republican of Missouri, did it make an impression on you? Well, I'm very pleased that the president chose to speak to us and spoke, chose to speak to the American people. But very frankly, he implicitly attacked Ken Starr. It's uh, said it's gone on too long. It's been too costly. It's been supervised by Attorney General Reno. If it's been improper, she could have fired Ken Starr if he's out of line. Uh, he accepts some responsibility, but then says this is only between his family and God. And truthfully, if indeed there was perjury committed or if there was subordination of perjury, it's not just between his family and God. Those are offenses against the government. So there are a lot of questions that remain unanswered. I don't think this is the kind of statement which had the kind of particularity, full sort of explanation that many people would be looking for. Would you say you're disappointed? Well, I am disappointed in, in his uh, implicit attack on Ken Starr, in his trying to deflect response, saying that the problem caused to the country is caused by the prosecutor. This is uh, How about the apology, of, though? Well, I'm very pleased to have the president say he accepts responsibility but on the one hand, but then indicates that there is no responsibility that he owes to the American people. He says this is something between his family and God, and I'm sure those are very important components of this equation, but the American people deserve a, 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 a president that uh, reports to them, 
and uh, acknowledges what happened, what didn't happen. I don't think the president explained his behavior. He uh, used a new set of phrases so that it's a, not a comparable, it's inappropriate contact. Uh, instead of talking about the kinds of phrases that have pre been previously used, so we have another set of words. And frankly, what we need is a leader, not a lawyer. We don't need new terms of art with wiggle room. We need explanations right. and the truth. Hold on right there. We know uh, James has to leave us. I thank you very much thank you. for spending all the time well, the staying after. Hey. Uh, our panel will remain. We'll be joined by others. Don't go away. did what he had to do. Uh, he accepted responsibility. He apologized to the American public. He acknowledged uh, having misled the American public and including his wife. And I think that uh, right now we all have to respect his wish that this is a personal matter now. It's a family matter. And frankly, I am shocked that the independent counsel, uh, as we learned earlier, would go to the specifics of his sexual contact with Ms. Lewinsky. I don't think that warrants a public discussion. I think we all need to accept the president's apology now and move forward. Congressman Barr, it uh, did not satisfy Senator Ashcroft. Did it help you at all? Well, no. Uh, I'd, I'd look at this uh, more, I suppose, as a former prosecutor. And if, if everybody took uh, the tack that Ms. Caputo wants us to take and others want us to take of just bowing down and saying, oh, the man has apologized and said what he wants us to say, uh, to believe, uh, and therefore we have to move on, uh, we never would have prosecuted a single case and uh, this sets a very bad precedent if my colleagues and if the American public once again fall for this sappiness. Uh, all the president said was uh, leave me alone I'm not going to tell you what really happened I'm not going to well, stop he, playing word He said games. he had an improper relationship. You didn't want to know all the details did you? Did you want to know every sex act? I don't really care about the improper relationship at all. What I care about is obstruction of justice, jury tamp uh, uh, tampering with witnesses, subordination of perjury, possible destruction said, of evidence. He said the questions he were asked were not about that, but they were about private sexual acts. Did you favor the asking of questions about private sexual acts? Well, there may be a place for those in terms of developing uh, impeaching testimony, but again, my focus would not be on that, and he did not mm -hmm. say that there was no questions about anything else. Right. He focused where he wants us to focus, uh, and then comes up with this silliness that, oh, I'm going to now go into my private life. The fact of the matter is we must wait to see what Mr. Starr uh, presents to us to see whether there is, in fact, as I suspect there is, a pattern of obstruction of justice. And nobody's touched on that at all. The president said, I didn't ask anybody to lie. Well, of course he didn't. But he did things through words and actions that have the same effect. D.D. Myers, was that speech a little disappointing? Yeah, I noticed just looking bit. around the room, a kind of, I don't want to read anything, a pall. Yeah, I, I, I think he was, um, he seemed contrite. I think he's going to create a whole debate now about what he meant by inappropriate contact and what he might have said as the details of this deposition leak out, and there's going to be a whole long obsession about what did he mean. And I, I just don't, I, I think he was contrite. I think he made some good points. Uh, I think he made a just point in saying that the, even the president should have a private life because I think that's something that troubles the American people a lot. Too brief? Too brief, brief. And, and maybe a little too brief and maybe a little too much um, taking responsibility while shifting it. Well, 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 before we get from, uh, from Woodward and, uh, and Greenfield, well, Blitzer, what was your reaction? Well, the, the, the president did what a lot of his advisors wanted him to do, apologize and give the bare minimum amount of detail about his relationship with Monica Lewinsky. They had come to the conclusion, at least a lot of the, the legal team, that uh, he should not go into a full-scale explanation of his relationship with Monica Lewinsky. The biggest problem he's going to have is that he, he insisted that his uh, comments, his statements under oath in the Paula Jones deposition were, in his words, legally accurate. Well, one of the questions he was asked uh, several times, in effect, during that deposition is, we, d were you ever alone with Monica Lewinsky? And he said, I have no specific recollection of that. Now he's acknowledging that there were, there was, Excellent in his words, inappropriate contact. So he had to have had a specific recollection of uh, yeah. the kinds of Excellent. meetings he had with Monica Lewinsky. Excellent point. Bob Woodward? Uh, in, in the other audience that the president had to be speaking to was Ken Starr and his deputies. And in, in this uh, war between Starr and Clinton has really become a blood feud. And they're going to look at that and they're going to say, 
well, there are no grounds in that statement for us to stop the investigation. And the investigation continues, and as we found in these independent counsel investigations, there's hydraulic pressure that just makes it, okay, let's subpoena this, let's get that, and you can't stop the train. What did you think of the speech? Well, I think that it's, I want to hear what Leon Panetta has to we, say. We, we were he, trying to get him back. We lost him somewhere oh, in the did. shuffle. I'm not Leon Panetta, I'm sorry. <laughs> but try to look like him so we can get him back. You want to look in your no, eyes. But I, but I, you know, the feeling that I think you detected, and I think maybe with Didi, uh, I shouldn't speak for her, but I'm a journalist, so I do. Go ahead. Is that the, the, wor the, the words were right. I mean, at the, certainly at the start, they were, they were good. fudging. But, but I don't want to talk about cosmetics because the speech also, at root, was a political argument. I mean, and Didi is exactly right. Yes, I take responsibility, but now let me tell you why the work of the Independent Council. And by the way, the speech reflects what most Americans now think. My own feeling was that yeah. he, was, he was saying, if I can do the subtext, okay, I'm giving you, the public, what you need, which is my contrition, and I believe he feels that. I mean, what human being wouldn't? But then to turn around and say, and that's why we have to rally around the idea of ending this inquiry. Were well, you that's saying you were not impressed? Well, I, you know what? Was I, it a major apology to you? What it was was the most unusual and difficult speech any public <laughs> figure has ever had to give. And I don't, I, by the way, I think to judge this on a, on a scale of, you know, rhetoric eight, uh, cos yeah. cosmetology six, in this context is almost offensive, given what he, was had, what he had to talk but about. But we have to get in, uh, what, what is the world he's dealing with? And the world he's dealing with, as we reported Sunday, is the family. And he said in the speech, I want to put it right with the family. That's paramount in his mind. That's the biggest problem he's got. Hi, a lovely lady has been added to the panel. We shall get her thoughts and be taking some more phone calls. You'll meet other people as well. Babe Buchanan joins us right after this.